I'm George Curtis. Welcome to It's Your Environment. Each week it's my privilege to bring guests that teach all of us a little bit about our environment, how we can take better care of it, the mistakes we've made in the past that we don't want to repeat, and maybe some new ideas that are worth trying. Our environment is pretty important. It's important throughout the world. It's a worldwide environment actually, and decisions that are made in Russia can affect uh, results in South America or in North America or right here and certainly uh, in Alaska. One of the things that has happened and kind of sneaked up on us I think is that invasive species and we'll have an expert here today that will tell you what those are but they're, they're things that aren't natural or native in the area where they're now located and Unfortunately, that usually means that they're very aggressive and they don't have any enemies. And so they can just explode in terms of population and impact our native species, which probably work a little better and should be protected. But don't listen to me any longer. We've got an expert here who can talk to you about invasive species and some of the threats to our waterways and what you can do to make sure it doesn't get any worse and maybe even improves. His name is Greg Stacy. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Well, Mr. Curtis, that's pretty good. I, <laughs> can I call you Greg? I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. People can tell by the uniform that uh, you're employed as a warden with the Department of Natural Resources, but tell them a little bit about your background and education, training, and what got you that job. Well, actually, I started with the Department of Natural Resources in uh, 1990. And I was uh, as a pilot. I've uh, been flying for about 40 years as of now. But that time I started, I left the airlines and joined the natural resource. I like the resources. I've been around them all my life and had the opportunity to come on to the Department of Natural Resources as a uh, regional pilot. And I retired about four years ago as, a, uh, as the aviation manager. So I had the uh, five hangars and about 18 pilots that we use, 10 of the full time, even part time for fire and so forth. And uh, during my career with the uh, DNR, I, I was worked a lot with law enforcement, of course, with the aircraft, and was interested in that. And I had the opportunity to go to the, the academy, at the State Patrol Academy, in uh, 1993. So I maintained my credentials. And about two years ago, uh, one of our fine wardens that uh, um, is a Minocqua is Tom Rassi. And he is, uh, did a paper for the, his leadership academy. And he was very involved and very deeply concerned about the invasive species. And Tom put the program together for the water guard program, which would be deputy wardens like myself that would work in all over the state in specific geographical areas. And our job was to start working with people from the Clean Boats, Clean Waters, working with people from the lake associations, fishing tournament uh, groups, and so forth, to try to alleviate some of the problems we were having and the threat we had of invasive species moving to the inland lakes. I think you made a comment earlier, we were talking before the air went on, that, uh, that we had a little over 15,000 lakes within the state. And uh, this concern that, that Tom had when he conceived the Water Guard program was the movement of things and how people were moving, moving these different invasive species from lake to lake unbeknownst to them and causing problems with what we like to call weeds, water, and fish. There was weeds being moved, like the Eurasian milfoil, and uh, the curly pond weed, and people didn't realize how aggressive these weeds are. And pass on to that, to, to the water, people didn't realize how water could transport the virus disease that we have currently, VHS, and in Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, the Mississippi River, and of course, unfortunately, right here in the Oshkosh area, and up Lake Butamore. So, the fish aspect of that, the last part of the, the three we got to keep in line, is the transport of live fish because some of the diseases can be moved by live fish or again infected water. Can you give us some examples of exotic species that have entered through the Great Lakes, for example? Well, right now we have uh, in the species themselves the, the brown goby, which is in Lake Michigan, and you will find it sometimes in Lake Winnebago. We have uh, Schmelt, people thought was a native species, actually is, is not native to, uh, to Wisconsin. It was actually introduced as a, as a food when they were first uh, planting salmon in the Great Lakes. And that was out of Crystal Lake in Michigan. It's kind of a bizarre story. And 
like everything else had escaped, and so we have that running around now. But we have, uh, as far as the aquatic invasives, we have, uh, like I said, the round goby, and we have the uh, rusty crayfish, which is uh, from the Ohio Valley area, actually. And there's a numerous other aquatics. Um, we have the red swamp crayfish, which just happened recently in an infestation down in Germantown. So it is, these, all these little critters have been brought in either by people using them for bait or using them for school studies, the rusty crayfish, for example, or they've been brought in by the, by the ballast of ships up the St. Lawrence Seaway. And a lot of those we feel probably did come from the ballast of ships and they just, they come from Europe or Asia and you just don't know where they really, they really came from to start with. Now a bad example, uh, an example that everybody's sorry about I think is the carp. I understand that they were not native to this country, am I correct about that? Yeah, the carp, the carp weren't, we do have some, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the white carp that you normally see or were brought in, they were using those down in the southern, southern part of the United States to, to clean weeds out and they thought they were going to help out doing that. Well, of course, that didn't work real well and then people started moving them around and then they just, they really, really destroy a lot of, of, of the spawning area for other fish and they, and they, they disrupt the whole chain, if you will, in, in, the, in the lakes. Uh, there's a buffalo carp which are quite a delicacy actually. And they are in mostly some of the lakes and some river sections. There's a small mouth and large mouth, which is an invasive, but we work very hard to, uh, we have to have contracts for people to harvest those to get them out of our, out of our system or keep the, keep the size of the, and the quantity of them lowered is what we try to now, do. Now, of course, some things have worked out, uh, probably by accident, but for example, the, uh, the, the pheasant is, uh, is an import. They aren't native, uh, the ringneck pheasant at least no. isn't native to this country. Uh, how about the Hungarian partridge? Is that, that's also an import? The partridge uh, is, as far as, the, we've had some problems keeping those in, the, in, the, in this climate up here, in the partridge. And I haven't really worked with the partridge that much. The pheasant I'm quite familiar with because of the, they, they raise them, the DNR does raise pheasants. In fact, down in uh, uh, Poinette is a, is a beautiful facility for doing just that and they work with pheasants forever and so forth to keep the pheasant population up. But they, are, they have been a very successful uh, introduction. They've adapted. The, the pheasants yeah. have adapted fairly yeah. well through much of the country, that's true. Let's take our first break and when we come back we'll talk about uh, a particular concern that we have of a disease uh, a virus actually, that yes. seems to be able to move within our waterways and apparently began in Europe somewhere, uh, got into the Great Lakes, and I want your theory on that, and already it's in Lake Winnebago, and yet some measures seem to be fairly successful in stopping or slowing it right there. I think you're correct. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 